What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back bringing you another awesome creation with the explosives update and that is of course the underground mine. We've also got a fantastic mine sweeper creation that we can use to seek out these mines underground and make our way through this extremely dangerous minefield. But first, we'll just take a look at the mine itself and uh, we'll put another one in the ground over here and just show you guys really what it does before we try and make our way through that minefield so really simply this is the underground landmine it is a very very simple creation it only uses the intelligentia mod it does not use any other mods and uh, the intelligentia mod only really for the player detection limit sensor so basically we've got this awesome underground mine hanging below the map over there and actually we can put a chair on this and you know what we can just go right below the map so in case you guys didn't know, you can easily get below the map in Scrap Mechanic if you build a sort of creation like this on a lift. So you can see we've got our lift on top of this sort of extra caution block section. And now if we actually lower the lift, you can see the mine goes completely below the ground and we can actually put stuff there. So we can just go underneath here and take a look at all the other mines. And in fact, if we just lower our, our lift, you can see we're on a seat. And if we look over in that direction, you can actually see the field of them sort of hanging out there and they're just sort of chilling below the surface. And there is a certain limit of despawn distance, so your creation won't instantly despawn and it's actually able to hang there. And so what we've got in this mine is a really simple system. So we've got a switch which activates it after this 30 second timer, which means basically until this 30 second timer goes through, the mine is completely deactivated and it won't ever trigger. So you can, you know, actually put it on the lift here. You can uh, use this switch, hit the switch, and then lower it into the ground. And then, you know, it's good to go after 30 seconds. So it gives you time to get away from it. And other than that, it's really just got the player distance detection sensor, three spud guns to make sure that it shoots the barrel correctly. And then of course, it's got a player indicator on the bottom. So each mine thinks it's a player. It won't trigger itself, obviously, but they will trigger each other if you put them too close together. Although, I think if you put one in the ground, you try and put another one next to it. You'd have to be really, really quick. Otherwise, you'd probably just set it off. But the player indicator there is really just so we can have an epic sort of mine sweeping, uh, you know, adventure. But regardless, it just means if you are trying to spawn in this landmine, as well as, you know, automatic turrets or any sort of homing missiles or stuff like that, they will probably target the landmine. So just be careful about that. We can just turn this on and then lower it into the ground really simply. We want to make sure that this little bolt head is above the ground and we could just, you know, disconnect that large suspension piece and boom, there we go. It is now perfectly sitting there and it is below the surface. And after 30 seconds, it'll be active. So if we spawn a really simple car, like uh, this multiplayer Monday truck, perfect, we can get in this and, uh, I, oh, it's right there in the middle. You can see we have foliage turned on because if you turn foliage off, they're a little bit easier to spot. So obviously, if you're playing with no foliage, you might see all these little bolts around. They'll still work. They'll still do the same thing. But with foliage on, they're definitely, definitely more difficult to spot. You can see the ones over there. Like, I, you can't even tell that they're there. Honestly, on the road, maybe you could tell because the road's pretty clear. But in this grass, if you paint them the same color as the grass, they are very, very, very difficult to spot. So... I think it's been 30 seconds. We'll just, uh, you know, we'll just go for a drive. Doesn't matter how fast we're, and there we go. So uh, just, you know, they'll work on players too, obviously, but much more, much more. There's nothing left. There's just the bed of this truck. Look, perfect, perfect. That's how you, that's how you make a truck bed. Now, obviously you could just turn foliage off and look for all the bolts and sort of dodge them that way. But if you want the authentic minesweeping experience, then you have to spawn yourself a proper minesweeper. And so here we've got the super awesome proper minesweeper. You can see here we've got uh, two buttons, a turret to turn it left, a turret to turn it right. And this third switch is actually just hooked into this controller uh, if you want to customize your measurements, mainly because we can mount this to a vehicle. But you can see it does sense players within this ring, and uh, if we're close enough, you have to be close enough to activate all the gates within this ring, all the proximity detectors, and if you do, then it'll set off this little sort of beeping tote block. Perfect, so we've got this truck, and we'll just uh, weld this. Of course, it's I think it's an odd width truck, isn't it? It is, it is. That's okay, you know what? We've got it mounted there, and we want to kind of make sure, you know, use a test mine to make sure it's calibrated correctly. But I think this is pretty good. You want it to be relatively close to the surface, maybe about one block across the surface. And it's always on, so there's nothing you need to do there. Once you've hooked it up, it's just, it's as soon as it detects something, it'll automatically start beeping. So you can see we've just hooked up the one and two buttons there. And then, of course, if we had the third switch hooked up, we could do that to, for example, let's say we wanted to do this kind of a negative 90, and that way we can, oh, wrong direction, right? We could put this up like that, and then we could press three and, you know, raise it up off the ground or, or completely move it out of the way if we want. But that way it just sort of acts like a turret. 
gives you the freedom to do whatever you want with it. Now, where is that? Where is that test one we put down? We really should keep foliage on for this. Um, I'm so worried we're gonna just completely destroy this car. Where is it? I can't even. Oh. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. So I think we need to calibrate a little bit more. You can see right here we're a little bit too high off the ground, so it's not really detecting it. We wanna wanna lower it so that it detects it within, you know, as close to the center of the circle as possible, but you don't want to have it so low that it's outside the circle, right? We could of course do this with just a single uh proximity detector. They are very, very close proximity. I believe they're 32 block range from the actual detector itself, but the detector is pretty low beneath the ground, so it works really, really well with players and vehicles. You might notice if you walk towards it as a player, it seems like it's detonating a little bit early, but that's because when you put yourself in a vehicle like this, you're actually lifting yourself off the ground more. We're going to actually save this creation on a lift because I feel like it's going to blow up a lot more. And then we're going to try and actually, you know, make our way. So first, let's see what happens if we, you know, we screw up. So obviously we can detect this. It doesn't get triggered by the detector. We screwed up. And uh, now we're just completely, completely gone. That's so amazing. So let's try and make our way through the minefield without actually looking for the mines. We're going to only simply use the beeping on the sweeper and see if we can make it through. Now, I honestly don't know where all these mines are. I mean, I placed them all, but I don't remember. So we're going to try and make it all the way through and then through that narrow passageway at the back. I know there's no more mines at the end of that narrow, pa narrow passageway. And I think we should be able to make our way through this just by sweeping back and forth so we're just gonna have to you know control this a little bit gonna kind of keep it right in front and uh and hope for the best here hopefully not hit anything so uh here we go all right just do some sweeps i don't i don't so hard to tell like that looks like it, it totally is one. So totally you can see the shadow of it. Okay, let's just dodge that one. Okay. I think we're far enough away. Is there any... I think you can't tell in this foliage. I don't know if there's any more in here. When you see the shadows like that or you see them in the open, it's it's pretty nice. But I think... I think we're good. Just straight here. Just straight. I feel like we're going to blow up though. Of course, when you're placing your mines, you got to make sure you place them far enough apart where the explosion of one doesn't trigger the other. Otherwise, you'll have a real problem on your hands, but... Um, oh my goodness. Okay, okay. But did I, is there actually no mines straight in this path? This might be the easiest challenge yet. This might actually be so easy. I'm so nervous, but like, I might have, I might have made a completely straight line here. This, oh no, no, I totally missed one. Oh boy, there, oh. Okay, let's place a couple more and uh, hopefully set them off as well. So here we go. So we'll place this one here. We'll just uh, turn it on, lower it down in here, and we'll drop that. Perfect. You can see it's uh, completely dropped. We got 30 seconds, and then we'll place another one here. Hopefully we're not too close to any other ones. I mean, they have player indicators on them, so if we are, we'll accidentally set one off with another one. Uh-oh, that one didn't go down far enough. That's not good. Just pull it out and delete it before it goes off. Got to make sure you get it low enough on the suspension. So the big suspension piece kind of helps because suspension doesn't have collision with the terrain, but the bolt on top does, and of course the explosive down below does. So you got to make sure that small suspension piece is sort of hanging. Did we even turn that on? I don't. I don't think. No. So here we go. Turn that on. Lower it down, and then just uh, make sure that perfect, just like that. You can see the bolt. Of course, if you drop it too low, then uh, the entire mine will fly through the map, come back from the top, and will probably explode on contact with the terrain again. So you got to be a little bit careful. I totally didn't turn that one on either. My goodness, got to remember to do that. Otherwise, they're just complete duds, and they just sit there. Here we go. Perfect 30-second timer. Boom. Deactivate. Done. Okay, and uh, let's just... I don't know how to get out of here. Oh, 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 God. Let's just reload this map. All right, so we are back. We've got our super fancy, awesome Minesweeper truck. I'm actually going to change the angle of this a little bit. I think I want to bring it a little bit closer to the truck. All right, something like that. Perfect. Nice and low to the ground. You want to make sure that you're, you know, just skimming. Oh, oh, oh my God. I just, oh, 
I was just freaking out there. I thought there was a mine right here, and I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna blow up. But no, it's actually just, it was just me, the player. Okay. So you want to make sure you know you got that nice and low to the ground, really good sweeping, and then of course we can hit three, and we'll just bring that out of the way if we want to drive a little bit quicker. So if you're not in a minefield, you want to engage mine sweeping. Of course, you can change this however you want. The piston there is just for show. I thought it looks kind of kind of neat. It doesn't actually do anything really, but uh, we're gonna try and make it through here again. So let's try doing this this time. Um, okay, so really low sweeping. Do lots of sweeps. We hit a mine there last time. I don't really know how because I thought I swept that, but we didn't. So here we go. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Probably should automate this to go back and forth on its own. I mean, I guess we could do that. You could hook up whatever you want. It's really just two electric motors there you can see. So you can really you can change whatever's hooked into those motors if you want. I just did it with simple buttons just to make sure you could have that control. But uh, we've got the minesweeper nice and close now. Okay, okay, there's a mine there. There's a mine there, okay. So let's turn to the right a little bit. Okay, I'm not sensing it. Okay, perfect. So of course I will upload both the underground mine to the workshop and the minesweeper. You can obviously make your own minesweeper devices if you have just a player detector, but this one's kind of fun. Hook it to the front of your vehicles. You know, maybe you have a challenge with your friends, build a giant minefield and see if they can make their way across it. But of course, you kind of have to have foliage turned on to make it a gentleman's game. If you have foliage turned off, it's uh, it's obviously a lot easier. Okay, there was a mine here last time, like in this exact spot, and I never saw it and it blew up. So like, what's the deal? Where is it? It was here, I guarantee you, because there was a blue flower and then it was a kaboom. I swear to God, if it happens again, like we better make it across. We're gonna make it across this field. I I feel it. I'm I'm so confident. Okay, just just nice. And, this is the most painful, painful thing. Okay, you can see one over there on the dirt. So there's no foliage there, and that's definitely one there. You can see another one there as well. So there's definitely two on the dirt there. Um, I when I was placing them, it's a lot easier to place them with no foliage because you know you can see exactly where they are so you can just go into your graphics and turn off the foliage just so you can okay okay another one there but you can see with the foliage you can you can't even see them there it is there it is right there you can see barely tell with the shadows so again you can kind of look for it if you if you know where they are oh god that was too close and we landed on this rock that was perfect it was intentional we're we're safe we are okay Obviously, with the connection tool, it's actually really easy. Why we could have just done this with the connection tool out? Look at that. See them all just sitting there underneath the field. Very, very difficult, though. A lot of fun, and I encourage you guys to check it out. Challenge your friends, and uh, make sure you put up lots of signs, though, to let people know. Of course, let me know of any other explosive builds you'd like to see in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.